Bills, Sabres, why is it always you? Yes, it's the best day of the week! My wife calls it Friday Junior, which I think is clever, but I also know it as Dang It Day! Welcome to another edition of Steve's Dang It's, where we take a look at the biggest dang it's from around the NHL over the past week. There was one in particular that was, um, was really highly requested, and, uh, hmm, hmm. Hmm. Well, okay. Uh, it was it was it was at a Panthers game. The Panthers play in Florida. D did you know that? Um. Okay, okay. Listen. Here. Here. Listen. So there was this guy. I don't remember his name. Let's just call him Kodak Black. He went to the Florida Panthers game, and he really enjoyed the Florida Panthers game because they beat the Vancouver Canucks. At the end. Look. A lot of you wanted a dang it's breakdown of that clip. No! What? We got demonetized because Brendan Lemieux bit Brady Kachuk. What do you think's gonna happen if we post this? Only two good things came out of Brendan Lemieux biting Brady Kachuk. First, we got to know the new golden rule that one bite is biting and two bites is eating. We have the Brendan Lemieux line. It's a, it's a line in the YouTube sand. What gets you demonetized? I don't know. And then after posting that video, we found out that someone biting someone else will get you demonetized. Well, it wasn't demonetized, it was age restricted. What do you think would happen if we showed it, guys? Hmm? Dang it. All right, here, let's move on to a different dang it. This is something that I have never seen before at a hockey game. Uh, okay, I gotta rephrase that too. This one involves cards. You collect hockey cards? I bet you do. I do. You ever bring hockey cards to a game and hope that someday your hockey heroes would sign them? Yeah, that's something that a lot of people have done. Let's say a relatively normal thing. Okay, what about a bunch of tarot cards? And then what about grabbing a fistful of them and throwing them onto the ice? Crowd kicks it back. Now looking and looking at the bench for a signal right now. Well, it's tipped it. Now they gotta go get it. Lucanen starts coming up. Something, I don't know, something yeah, to throw on the ice. It's a deck of cards. It's what? a deck of cards that has opened up all over the ice. They're, they're gonna have to stop. They're gonna have to, have to, to stop these. this yeah. game. That's that's dangerous. Somebody steps on that. The referee's gonna try to clear it without stopping the game, but that's still on the boards. I don't know how they're still playing this game right now. Empty net for the Devils. They send it down the ice. Why are you I, I don't know if I've ever seen a deck no, of cards. I, I, I never have either. And as soon as they hit the ice, it exploded. They all came out. So, referee did a really good job getting it cleaned up, so they could just wait till a natural call was made on the ice instead of forcing it, taking any advantage away from either side. Why? Now, this is neither team's fault, but Devils, Sabers. Why is it always you? This is actually wild because this is a close game. The New Jersey Devils are up 4-3 over the Buffalo Sabres in Buffalo with about 90 seconds to go in the game. Someone grabs a full deck of cards and throws them onto the ice and the one who notices it first is Rob Ray who's standing between the benches. Now, some of you are maybe a little too young to remember Rob Ray when he was playing, but I'm here to tell you if you look up Rob Ray fan on the ice on YouTube, well, that might have got us demonetized as well. The only way I can describe the contents of that video is a fan messing around and Rob Ray assisting them in finding out. Like, 20 times. Anyway, the number one interview in hockey that I want to hear this week is the person who threw that deck of cards. I want to know who they are. I want to know what their deal is. Look at Malcolm Subban. He saw both Sabres goalies saw. I want to know what they're looking at. I want to know who they're looking at. We demand answers. And until we get those answers, this, strangely, is a dang it. I love that the referee solution is just what any of us would have done. I mean, because you really got two options. Blow the whistle or kind of kick the cards. Sorry, redirecting the cards. The NHL doesn't believe in kicking anymore. For our next dang it, save of the year. Oh. My goodness, wasn't expecting that. Sliding across the Burns, takes the shot, right there in front, does it cross the line, it's in! And the octopus proving to be bad luck here for the Red Wings. And Brent Burns, who gets this puck, just throws it towards the net, and Nedeljkovic cannot recover in time. Take a look at the overhead. This puck goes trickling by, and you see Couture, and Nedeljkovic actually gets a glove on it. But it's Couture that's right there. 
And now Here's we have a discussion going on on the ice, too. Important to know, both these teams are still on the ice surface. Okay, so you really need the overhead cam to understand how bad this is. Because it's pretty normal otherwise. San Jose Sharks shoot it on. Nedeljkovic stops most of it. His job is to stop all of it, but like most of it works in the meantime. He reaches behind him and he gets it right on the goal line, but you gotta cover it for the play to be done! Logan Couture says, don't mind if I do, and then he did! That is a dang it. You know, I, I just feel like a lot of NHL players would benefit from watching Steve's dang it. Especially goalies. And especially Bart. And especially, in this case, Sergei Bobrovsky. Hawk and pawn, it bounces back to the floor in his own. No icing here. Bobrovsky out to the dock, given away. Guriano behind the net. Bobrovsky scrambling. for Bobrovsky to do what he did with this. You know, he, he tries to make a soft pass to his teammate. And in doing that, it, it's an easy turnover. You know, credit Guriana for getting in there and forcing it a little bit. That's an egregious turnover. Now this game is a wild one. It's 4-4 between the Panthers and the Stars in Dallas. It's a high scoring affair. The Stars are wearing their, their Tron jerseys that you can see from space. Sergei Bobrovsky, thinking this is the Olympics perhaps, gives it right to his countryman in Denis Gurianov. But here's the thing, most goalie dang it's where they give the puck away. It, like, the puck is in the net pretty soon after. But no, Gurianov holds on to this thing for what I can only describe as 45 minutes because Bobrovsky, rather than going back to his net, does what I do every time in EASHL when I panic. I don't know, kneel down, hope for the best. You usually end up whacking it into your own net. But instead, Gurianov goes for a stroll, throws it in front of Jamie Benn, who scores. Just stay in the net. Just stay in the net. Like, I'm sorry, the argument has always been, hey, you know, you criticize a goalie for misplaying the puck, but you don't understand. You don't know. You don't know how to quantify how much a goalie playing the puck helps. Because they'll leave the net to play the puck 20 times, 30 times, 40, 50 times before they make a mistake like that. And you know, I used to believe that. And then I started making these videos. And specifically this season, that we can't get through a week without there being at least three of these. Stop! Stop! Stay in the blue. Okay, we need to make the creases bigger again. Not to teach attacking players to stay out, but to teach goaltenders to stay in. Not that. No, that's a dang it. For our next dang it, you ever score on your own net? Dave call coming against Minnesota. Out to the line. Dowd with it. Into the corner. Hagelin's pass off target. All the way down, and they score! With the delayed call coming, the Capitals throw one in their own net. Kalen Addison will likely get credit for his second NHL goal. How great is this, Anthony? The crowd loved it. The suspense is that puck. Each rotation closer and closer to the empty cage. Schrader had to wait for the goal horn to blow. <laughs> now the goal song can play, but Minnesota will be shorthanded. Oh, what, a, what a sequence. Kuznetsov gets his second with the man advantage. This one, six versus five, his first five versus four. But it's going to be Kalen Addison. Now, somebody on the wild touched this puck on the half wall, and I don't know if it's going to be Kalen Addison for that play right there, the closest one to him as they scored, but. Or, or if it's the last person that touched him, which again could have been Kalen Addison, but how about this? The Wild right back in this game, shot themselves in the foot. Sorry, let me rephrase that. 
You ever have a 2 nothing lead and then score on your own net and blow the entire 2 nothing lead and lose the game in overtime? That's what happens here. The Washington Capitals have an extra attacker on the ice. The Minnesota Wild took a penalty. That's naughty. Don't do that. The Capitals, with the extra attacker, fire the puck back to the point. Ooh, it's dangerous at the point because they might shoot it away from the point and towards the net. Instead, Carl Hagelin it didn't need to be Carl Hagelin. Carl Hagelin fires it down the length of the ice and into the yawning cage belonging to his own team, and the Minnesota Wild are on the board. Hagelin only has two goals and seven points on the season, but three goals and eight points if you include this one. Oh, that's a tough one. And, I mean, only, like, partially his fault, but it's still, I mean, you're the guy. That's a tough one. That's a dang it. You can take the Penguin out of Pittsburgh, but you can't take the Pittsburgh out of the Penguin. Now, they were not the only team to have a dang it in this game, though, because the Minnesota Wild wants down to nothing. This goal happens. They get another one. They tie it. This game is going to... Ah! Unbelievable. Ten extra attacker goals scored by the Wild this year. And on a night where the only goal, Kakinen way out to play it. Wilson fires and a pass <laughs> saved by Kakinen from the faceoff circle. <laughs> it's unorthodox, Anthony. But hey, we talked about it. A couple of huge saves in the second period from Kakinen. Looked a little bit different than that one. Break away from Sprung. Eller on the back door that kept the Wild within two. They battled the back. They've had some luck. The Kuznetsov own goal. It took them 55 and a half minutes to get their first goal. What? What? You didn't need to. That is the fear, the abject, the, the terror that Alexander Ovechkin instills in people. Ovi's not gonna win this race to the puck, but Kapokakinen leaves the net because what if he does? And so Kapokakinen makes the split second decision with less than 10 seconds left that he's Kapokako now and he's a skater. Flies out of the net, can't clear the zone, Tom Wilson shoots it, and this is where he made the save. No, no, we need the full screen. Come on! It's like he's at the face-off dot, man! Listen, I know a full set of goaltending equipment is already expensive enough, but they should all come with a bungee cord! That is a dang it, because it was funny and inconsequential the Wild ended up winning the game, but it could have been a lot worse. And, uh, that's it! That's it, I think, for this week, right, Drew? It's- it's not? It's- I think it is, though. No, but I think it probably should. I, th I think it kind of should be. I, I, I- man, this video's way too long. Yeah, but I don't want- Alright, let me be more blunt then. I don't wanna! I don't wanna try- I don't wanna do- Fine! It was 4-1! The Toronto Maple Leafs have a 4-1 lead on the Colorado Avalanche, and since blowing a 4-1 lead in Game 7 in 2013 to the Boston Bruins, blah 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 blah, the Leafs have had tons of 4-1 leads. A very low percentage of them have resulted in disaster. So when they go up 4-1, everyone's like, Ooh, you worried about this one? And I just go, shut up. No, I'm not. And the avalanche made it 4-2, and I said yes a little. But then, ah, Jack Campbell, hat pick, easy hat pick, makes a save of the year candidate. They're winning this game. Write it down, write it in marker. They are winning this game. Hat pick of the century. There is no way they lose. The Leafs are an unstoppable force and an unmovable object. Avs make it 4-3, Avs make it 4-4, and then they win it 5-4 in overtime. Copper on the doorstep, a push by the Avalanche, Picard scores! And now it's Rantanen again, in front! Off the line and in! Yes, it is, Dome. Hounding Kyle Clifford, trying to get it to Rantanen, in front, scores! JT Copper and the Avalanche have tied it! TJ Brody tracking Rantanen, Devon Teams. Gets it back, Teams going to the net, scores! Sportsnet Stats tweeted this tweet, and it was very unnecessary, I thought. I don't even have the tweet on me, I'm gonna do it from memory. I think I could do it in order. So the Leafs, with James Reimer and Nett, blow game seven, 4-1 lead, Boston Bruins. The next season, November of the next season, the Leafs, with Jonathan Bernier in net, blow a 4-1 lead against the Pittsburgh Penguins and lose. The rookie Leafs, with a bunch of high-flying new players, they stomp on the Winnipeg Jets, they go up 4-0. Patrick Laine 
first career NHL hat trick capped off with the overtime winner in a game where the Leafs not only blew a 4-1 lead, but a 4 -1. Nothing lead. A couple years later, the Leafs take on the Montreal Canadiens. Michael Hutchinson in net for this one. They get a 4-1 lead, but the Habs start to chip away at the lead, and that's the game you might remember as one where Kasperi Kapanen threw his stick at Jeff Petrie, resulting in a penalty shot on which he scored. The Habs actually went up 5-4. Matthews had to score just to send the game to overtime, and the Leafs lost in the shootout. Last season in the Canadian division, the Leafs have a 5-1 lead over the Ottawa Senators. The Sens score to make it 5-2, and then 5-3 and then 5-4 and then Evgeny Dodonov wins it 6-5 in overtime. I forgot the 5-5 goal in there, but you knew! We all knew! And now this! Again, from memory, if you follow the Twitter account Ineffective Math, the Leafs have blown 23 goal leads, I believe? since the beginning of the 0708 season. That is the season I began making videos on YouTube. And you wonder why my eye twitches. Dude, that list didn't even include games where the Leafs blew other three goal leads. What about the Leafs blowing a three nothing lead to the Devils mere weeks after blowing a four nothing lead to the Jets? That was Jonas Enroth in net. What about the Leafs in their home opener against the New York Rangers blowing a five one lead on home ice? They did eventually come back and win the game 8-5, but they blew a 5-1 lead first! By the way, the reason I'm mentioning the goalies, that list of six blown 4-1 leads that I mentioned, five different goalies! Reimer, Bernier, Anderson, Hutchinson, Anderson again, and Campbell. Heck, I just found a way to mention Jonas Enroth, you forgot he even played for the Leafs! One day, they're gonna win the cup. One, one day, and it's gonna be so good. It's gonna be so good. But I promise you, It'll be a 5-4 overtime win after blowing a 4-1 lead. Ah! Did you like that one, Drew? Hmm? Bet you did! That is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell your friends. If you're a Toronto Maple Leaf, don't blow the 4-1 lead! Put it on a shirt.